Okay, so um, so this is going to be uh, more like uh, an advice concerning people that use uh, EW engine mostly uh, or any other photo engines such as this model was that uh, uh, designed to use uh, what we popularly call here metal gasket. So what you are looking at here is uh, the one we call paper gasket. They are usually thicker than those metal ones. Such are the ones they say here, and also uh, the quality are not as good as uh, the original paper gasket. The ones that the engines are made to run with this type of quality of gasket. That's the one they will call paper again. Call paper. I try to remember the the actual technical name. Anyway, um, so. They tend to, especially these ones, from my own personal experience or observations, the ones they say in Nigeria for all this uh, um, ES engine, EW engine, I'm talking about Pojo engines now, uh, most I give it two years. I'm yet to come across one that passed three years, unless maybe you don't even travel with the car. Even when they don't travel with the car, yeah, they almost give up at some point. You know, because because the quality are not good, qualities are not good. So over time, they start to flatten and start overheating. Especially when you add load to the engine, like AC in the hot afternoon, it start overheating. When you switch out the AC, the temperature will drop. So this is always one of the symptoms of failing head gasket. Which this type of paper gasket is uh, or head gasket is not uh, is known for. For those who don't know, head gasket is uh, that's the engine say that head gasket, which we, uh, is popularly locally known as uh, top cylinder gasket in Nigeria. So this is the one I like for EW engine. So for example, this is for EW ten J four. Um, this is the OEM. If I'm not mistaken, so this is what it looks like. So, if you look at it, let me zoom in. So, if you see, you can see this is uh, iron or metal compared to this other one that is paper. So, all EW engines are none, none was produced with this paper one instead with this one. So, this one is usually thinner and they last more longer. Um, so I had you come across one that failed because uh, without any other component causing it to fail. Compared to this one, paper gasket that it, even if every other is part of the cooling system, the thermostat, the water pump, uh, no air in the system, every other thing is still a support to fail. Like I said, I'm not saying all the paper, paper gaskets, I'm saying this lower quality one they say in Nigeria. For the EW engines, uh, T5 engines, e ES engines, yeah, they do the same thing. So um, that's why I, I always recommend. Most times they are they tend to fail when you travel with them. Not that first few. If sometimes it takes six months, one year, few more years, and then you're on a journey. Then suddenly, and one funny thing about them is if it's this one. For this one we call metal gasket, that's the the one we got follow come OEM. Before they fail, uh, before this gasket will fail, you engine will keep running without water. You will be making soil. Ka -ka 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 -ka. Will be smelling badly as in you will keep running. It takes a while. This gasket, you have to drive the car for a much longer distance without water or with that high of eating on a vessel before this will eventually give up. So you may overheat today, you without uh, you didn't drive it much this time before you notice the overheating. You drop it, change it, uh, whatever that caused the overheating, that touch your gasket. You drive the car another 10 years, nothing will happen. You overheat another time, give it heat to the red zone. You stop, you notice, oh, it was a fan. You replace the fan or fix the problem, the fan starts working again. Nothing. When you see this paper one, hmm. 
Once the car, in fact, I'm not saying all the time, but on average, once your temperature gauge hits, cooler temperature gauge hits uh, that uh, red zone, forget it, it's gone. Most of the time, from my own observation, once you hit that red zone, it's gone. You are dismantling your engine. Unlike this uh, original uh, metal one. But then, don't get me wrong, like, like I say, not all engines produce from, um, I, I think Pojo introduced this uh, metal gasket uh, in the late 90s, actually starting from, I don't know about SU engine, whether SU engine have uh, this type of gasket, metal one, probably is the paper one, but like I say, it doesn't mean the paper one are meant to fail after some time, no. It's because the ones they sell here for the EW engines are not the original ones. And they're also thicker than they, they should be. The the metal one are usually thinner. If you buy if you put a thicker head gasket, there are people that even buy two metal has gasket head gasket or buy two or even three pepper head gasket that is much thicker. Put it, you will see the gap between the cylinder head and the engine block. Will be like, Whoa, if you put your finger, maybe swallow the finger. Then, to, when it comes to setting the timing, woo, it will be like talk of war. Could take you two, three days <laughs> to be able to get the timing right because the, the, the thickness, the, the when they are designing engine, they factored in um, the compression, the the, the, the what's it called thickness of the the gasket that will give them what they want, and then that will also determine the number of teeth on the uh, timing belt or timing chain. So, but once you go, you alter the 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 gap between the engine block and the center head gasket, it's going to affect your timing. So, because even when you set the timing right, after a while. Uh, for example, this kind of thicker head gasket, lower point two one, as it start flattening or thinning out, your your timing will start changing again. Even when, even if you manage to get it right, where well, after the first time you put uh, the two, three, double, or you know head gasket. Advantage this tend to have sometimes when you put all this kind of thicker head gasket is that, uh, for example, if your timing fails. It might not actually hit the valve because it has in increased the, the gap between the piston and the valve. So when it fails, it will not hit it most times. So there are people that put up to two head gaskets. That's an advantage. But that, that also what usually causes the failure of the of the timing belt. Because it's, it stretches the belt. More than you should. Remember, you, you, the pair is supposed to have like 134 teeth. And you're supposed to have a very tiny gap between the cylinder head and the engine block. And the gasket is in between. So it will be, tension will be okay that it won't be too tight. But when you now put something that will push up this, this thing, so you now have to force the belt in. We should now make it uh, too tight so it's overstretching the belt, putting more pressure on the belt so far, you know, the belt will give up. But the advantage, yeah, yeah, it might give up and it will affect the valve. It could still be effective, it depends. So, please stop uh, using this type of gate gasket. It's not good for your engine. And what I'm saying, if it's not recommended, don't use it. Buy this type recommended. Find out what which type is recommended. Get the original one. What I mean, I mean the genuine one. Even if it's not OEM, just make sure it's the right high quality one. Put it. Don't manage when it comes to head gasket. I always recommend not manage. Most of when people buy cars, or I buy cars for people. I notice that, uh, or the people bring cars for me to assess and fix. Once I notice that. Um, the 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 head gasket has been replaced and they put all this type of paper low quality one. One of the things I will list out to be done, repairs to be done is to remove change the head gasket back to the recommended one. The only time I will not recommend it is if to, if the engine is already weak. 
not necessarily because of the casket. Just it's almost on his way out. They'll be like, hey, just keep using it until you can afford to replace the engine or the build, depending. But then the build, it has to do with the degree of the wear. We determine whether it will make sense to the build or get rid of the engine. So, please, depending on the person's budget. Um, so that's what I always advise. Um, use the recommended one. Don't use any of that thing. Most times they fail uh, when they are you are on a, on a journey. That's when they usually start giving you symptoms. Or even when you are in the city, but you're on a hot afternoon, uh, you start noticing your temperature after some months of, you know, using the this type of uh, lower quality gas. They notice that uh, maybe your AC, your temperature will start shooting off. You shut the AC to come down. That's usually the symptom, the way they go out. Until one day, that's all. Oh, he has one small form of overheating. Again, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier. This one, you can be driving the car, the car will overheat. Maybe for some reason, it will start seeing it get to red zone. You come out, check. Oh, it was the fan that was not working. You replace the fan. Nothing. You can drive the car another five, ten years, no issue. You overheat again. Maybe this time the thermostat has failed. You notice that you had the sound, you switch off your car, deal with the faulty thermostat. Keep running. Before this gasket will fail, eh? you it, it's like you the let's assume there's no the car is overheating terribly and you, you still your kind of running and you keep driving the car maybe for another fifty kilometers or something with the temperature on the red zone, you keep uh you can hear the burning smell, the way a crush plate usually burns. You hear it is smelling bad as in like a burn something. There it's gone. Eventually I have to change it. But if you see this one, let's just say 90% of the time, if not 95 or 98% of the time, once your car starts overheating and you hit that red zone, don't worry, you are going to change this casket. Forget it, it's gone. Tada is that the harm did. You may not start throwing water inside your engine or that, but the harm has been done. Another thing I want to point out here is um uh, what is it called? The temperature gauges. Please make it a habit to be looking at your gauge every once in a while, whether you are driving in the city or you are in a journey. Every once in a while, glass of glass, just peep, cap, peep at your coolant temperature gauge as you are driving. I mean, what is there? You know, your your eyes are always mostly in the front. So all you need is just to, uh, depending on the design of the instrument panel, take a peep at the coolant temperature gauge. Keep up. I don't know, some people, they just focus more on fuel gauge. Even when I'm traveling, I hardly look at fuel gauge. What's my point? As long as I know my fuel tank is not leaking, so why am I bothered? Well, if you understand your car, you know that your car will consume so and so amount of fuel at certain distance, given a specific speed. So I'm talking about vehicle speed. So if it's going to consume 30 liters uh, per every 300 kilometers you cover, you know that, oh, okay, by 300 km, that means you probably I will need to get to this town before it will drop to a point that I may need to top up fuel. I'm bothered looking at it. We have my focus on, of course, it's, a, it's, it's, remember, it's an assembly, so most times your eye will go to all of them anyway. So I always look at, but my focus is always on the coolant temperature gauge and the oil temperature gauge. Whether I'm driving in the city or, in fact, to be honest, that is even what it means when, that's why most cars, I prefer cars that have cooler temp, uh, oil temperature gauges because that's what will tell me when to start pushing my car out because since I'm into performance, so it's, it's, it's a big deal but not too of a big deal. The, what I mean is if, if I'm interested in a car it doesn't have it, fine, it won't stop me from, getting that car. But I would I prefer he has that he has that feature.
Ben ici, dans quoi tu as fait ta question? Non. Non. Là, je vais te dire ça, dans la capacité de poser tes réunions. I don't care how good it looks. Without that cooler temperature gauge, it's a no no for me. I don't care how far economical it is. Doesn't mean it's a bad car, just like something I cannot deal with. Why? Those gauges will help to prevent your car from breaking down or causing damage. That's why they are there. So, yeah, something has already failed. Maybe your thermostat has failed. So what will that happen is if your temperature gauge is usually at 90 for you know this is how you know it it works and suddenly you start seeing it going beyond 90 you should be concerned even at 100 degrees Celsius it hasn't caught co co well, it actually hasn't started it will only start by the time it's like it enters that vessel so meaning that you can stop it before you enter that vessel. So that it won't damage any other thing. So even if, in other words, it could be that your fan failed naturally. So if I, you deal with only the fan, but if you leave it in our enter red zone, then chances that it will blow up your radiator because it become too hot or damage your head gasket or blow up one of your radiator hoses or you know, something. I don't know, plastic pipe, water coolant, plastic pipe, something. So that's why they are very important to me. Coolant temperature gauges, so I, I just cannot deal without them. The oil temperature gauge helps me to know when, if I'm in the mood to drive the car very fast. Yeah, it will tell me when to start doing that because I know if your oil temperature is below 20 degrees Celsius and you start pressing your throttle almost to the floor, come on, you are grinding your engine that time, you are basically destroying your engine. So uh, what I do is I wait until you get up to at least minimum 70 degrees. I just want it to come up. Let it become hot enough to do its job. Because cold oil doesn't really lubricate the engine very well. So you need to warm up. And what helps is to warm up is coolant temperature. Coolant temperature, most time you see, it has to get up close to 90 degrees Celsius or so before the oil temperature starts climbing. Depending on the oil uh, thickness, though, for those that use all these uh, grease in the name of oil, called 20W50 in their uh, low uh, tolerance engine, yet yeah, you expect uh, the oil to warm up uh, faster. That's why your engine always fails. So, um, I hope this makes sense. So, uh, two things use the recommended. Uh, gasket and the thickness also um, what's the second one always be mindful on your gauges always make, make it a habit I don't give people cars for one, one of the two reasons is this to drive I don't because people don't care see people just jump be driving there until your car stop running then they will start looking at your gauge what's going on even when the beep is there even if you are not looking at this cement panel, I saw a modern project car is concerned, they will be beeping once there is a serious fault like that. You hear a beep sound, they don't care, they just keep driving. Even before you even get to that stage, you don't even need the beep sound, you will hear the engine sound will change. You will be making all kind of ka 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 the power will drop. People do, I mean, people can really, I don't know, man. You can't tell me that you are driving a car, so there is something there's a difference. You didn't notice it, just keep driving until boom, it breaks everything, damage everything in the process. Maybe it could be only one minor thing that was causing the issue. You would have stopped and fixed it. But you just keep, but you just keep, yeah, it doesn't. Anyway, so uh, just an advice save yourself, save yourself um, for your own good. Alright, so um, like and subscribe to the channel, and um, so that uh, when I put out some of these videos, um, you'll be able to see that and uh, you know prevent uh, becoming a victim or falling into such issues. Not every video that I share, sometimes I leave it there. It, uh, serious ones can always, if they are subscribed to the channel, they will always see it when I, I publish them. You know, but hey, I can't make this uh, this kind of decision for you. All right, till next video.